What's going on, everyone? Welcome to the Pride Detroit YouTube channel. I'm Miko, joined by my guy Morgan here. And Morgan, we're back to do another mock draft reaction. But this time, we're actually going to keep it in-house and take a look at our very own Eric Schlitz seven-round mock draft, which anybody that's bold enough to do a seven-round rock seven round mock draft like hats off to you even more kudos to eric for like doing one and then like actually writing an article about it because that that takes a lot of guts man in my opinion right <laughs> they call him the machine for a reason right like if y'all don't know eric schlitt uh managing editor at pride detroit.com um one of my bosses uh brilliant mind one of the best in the game if you if you think you're if you think i'm wrong debate your mama i promise he is um, but yeah, the man lives for this. This is his favorite time of the year. Loves the draft, loves the process. Um, so yeah, it's it, this is good too because it, it's a really nice exercise in thinking. Like he's trying to think. It's not a you know an Eric thing. He's trying to yeah. think like how Brad Holmes is going to think on draft day, and like we know Brad Holmes' strategy is what Miko, best player available, man, all yes, day long. <laughs> And no, and I'm I'm right there with you. Eric is by far one of the smartest people that I've ever gotten to know as far as when it comes to, to football knowledge. So uh, I'm excited to, to to jump into this this mock draft. And as you guys can kind of be able to see on the screen, uh, we got all seven picks here. So we're going to start with with round one, first pick. And Eric goes in a way that you and I are very much in favor for. They uh, He has the Lions picking A.D. Mitchell with the 29th overall pick. Uh, there's a lot of different options. Like, I think there's going to be a lot of options for the Lions at wide receiver. A.D. Mitchell has to be like near the top when it when it comes down to best wide receiver that the Lions could possibly get if that's the route that they want to take. Morgan. Yeah, I agree. Um, coming out of Texas, man, A.D. Mitchell has all of the you know attributes you'd want in an X receiver, which is is what the Lions are kind of missing now um, with Josh Reynolds uh, signing with Denver, right? So. And he's listed at 6'2", 205, freaky deaky numbers, uh, ran a 4-3-4-40, uh, 1.52, 10-yard split, 39-and-a-half-inch uh, vert, and an 11-3-3 broad jump, which is really freaky. Like, that's that's a foot further than Roma Dunze out of Washington, who's going to go in the top 10, top 15, if I had to guess. So, yeah, I really like A.D. Mitchell's tape. I know we were talking about it. I know people aren't going to love this, man, but guess what? The way he, the way Brad Holmes approach, approaches free agency is so he can draft like this. So he's not sitting here thinking, "Well, dang, I I know this corner is 48th on my board, but we need a corner, so I'm going to take him." And that's how you get yourself into trouble um, mm -hmm. in terms of reaching, right? And so I love this approach. And uh, yeah, what about you? Yeah, I I love this pick. I think it definitely screams a, a Brad Holmes pick. And again like we've kind of talked about before, or even with the last mock draft, like um, I think it was Mel Kuyper who had the Lions picking uh, Xavier Leggett out of South Carolina. Like mm -hmm. wide receivers should very well be in the mix. And I know there's going to be people that are like, oh, you guys just want a shiny toy. And it's not so much that. It very much is what you're saying, Morgan, best player available. And if if the board were to fall in such a way where the best talent available is a wide receiver, I don't think the Lions would shy away from that because, like you said, they still need an X. They did lose a wide receiver in Josh Reynolds. Yes, they kept DPJ, but why not, again, either upgrade from DPJ or at least introduce more competition at that X spot with a guy like A.D. Mitchell? And I think it's worth mentioning one of the reasons that A.D. Mitchell may find himself near the bottom of the first round and maybe top of the second round isn't really his ability because, like you said, he has the measurables. He has the athletic profile. It's just like he didn't. He's one of those players that didn't come on until like this most recent season, right? He started out freshman year playing at Georgia. Actually, had a pretty respectable uh, freshman year: four hundred and twenty-six receiving yards, four touchdowns. Very respectable. Had a pretty had a little bit of a sophomore slump. Transfers to Texas for his uh, junior senior year, and ha it kind of has a much more productive season: eight hundred and forty-five receiving yards, eleven touchdowns. This kid can absolutely move. He's absolutely something that I could see the Lions targeting and, and implementing into their offense to kind of keep it that high profile, high octane, octane type of offense. Yeah, for sure. Like we talked about it a couple of videos ago, but doing this, man, you're just adding like another stone to the infinity gauntlet. Like uh, 
you know, he's going to be, Mitchell's going to be really quick, really sudden off the line of scrimmage. He's a big dude. He's going to be tough to jam. And, you know, I, I know y'all have heard me say this before, if you're familiar with our channel, but we're going to talk about 11 personnel real quick, which is one of the base personnel a lot of offenses work out of these days. So you're going to have uh, A.D. Mitchell at the X, Amon Ra, all pro, St. Brown at the Y in the slot. And then at the Z, you're going to have this cat named Jamison Williams who got, you know, really cooking towards the end of last year. All right. And then you have one of the best offensive lines in football. You have a pro quarterback in Jared Goff who understands this offense inside and out. And then you have the best running back duo in the NFL. Oh, and by the way, maybe the best tight end in the NFL, depending on who you ask, and Sam Laporta. So Jameer Gibbs, David Montgomery, you, it's just a... It's a bunch of weapons, and I understand people might think this is overkill, but <laughs> if you can just score a ton of points every game, why wouldn't you, right? I was going to say, I, I I don't know if there's any, if there's many picks, right, that the Lions could make where it wouldn't feel like that, you know, whether it's a wide receiver, whether it's a defensive tackle. Again, the, yes, I understand that there are positions where it's like, man, it feels like they need more when you talk about positions like edge or maybe even looking at corner. But that doesn't mean that you can't get those kind of players later in the draft. Um, even offensive line, which is the position that Eric chooses to address with the Lions' second pick at uh, pick 61, going with Christian Haynes out of out of Connecticut. And Morgan, this is a guy that I know that you're a real big fan of. Yeah, man, Christian Haynes got some nastiness in him. He he plays the offensive, you know, the position at a guard with some hate in his heart, and I say that in a good way, right? Like he. He doesn't want to just block you. He wants to punish you. Uh, I think Eric's comp for him was uh, Larry Warford. Uh, if you guys remember Lions fans, uh, War Daddy, uh, <laughs> I believe. I believe out of Kentucky. Um, yeah. He's a mauler, man. Yeah. So, yeah, I would love it. Solid and pass pro, um, but a re really going to excel as a run blocker. And a, he's not going to start, right? You're going you're gonna to draft this guy. And I know, again, people are going to be like, oh, my God, what are they doing? You're going to follow your board, guys. If there's not, sure, if there's an edge rusher here sitting at 61 that the Lions really like, take them. I bet Brad Holmes would. But if if it's not there, he's not going to force it. That's just, it's this is the smart way of doing business. Let the man cook. That's the last I'll say about that. I promise I'm not going to hammer that home <laughs> every pick. But yeah, man, Christian Haynes not going to start in all, you know, he might push uh, Zeitler. Um, maybe probably not. And, you know, he can be your swing, uh, offensive lineman maybe for when you, when mm -hmm. you want to go heavy, uh, with, with bigger, with bigger personnel, but he'd be in line to start in maybe 2025 when the Lions make a decision on one of their two, you know, aging guards, uh, in Zeitler and Graham, and Graham Glasgow. So I love this pick. Uh, what about you? Yeah, I'm also, again, this is another home run hit for me for, for Eric with this pick, because again, I'm right there with you in the terms of, the Lions need an offensive lineman, whether it's, you know, for the present or for the future. Why not get a, a very talented offensive lineman that you don't have to force into a starting role, but you can put him in a room with a lot of veterans and kind of allow him to soak up all of that knowledge. But if, you know, again, this is we're talking about players that, that work in the trenches, right? Injuries happen all the time. And whether it's a Frank Ragnow that may have to miss a game or two or again, Kevin Zeitler's getting up there in age. At least you have a high quality guard that can immediately slide in and play next to a Panay Sewell or play next to a Taylor Decker. And based off of what he's done at UConn, at least you know he's going to be a very solid, or at least has the potential to be a very solid run blocker, which is one of the things that the Lions want to do the most. So this is another one of those positions, much like wide receiver, where I think people may see it and be like, but you can get that position later in the draft. Guys, you can get all of these positions later in the draft. It's all about quality, though. And if you can get quality players at that position, and again, that position, that player is graded higher on the Lions board than any edge rusher or defensive tackle that, that may be available. At this point in time, based off of what Brad Holmes has done, like you said, you kind of got to let the man cook and continue to make high quality picks that, again, whether they play this year or their you know future plays, at least you know you have talent in the wings and ta talent waiting to hit that football field. Yeah, and this is how you build a model of consistent success, right? Which they've said time and again, that's mm -hmm. that's their goal. They want to be good for the long run. Um, and 
Brad Holmes' job is to, yeah, he's thinking about 2024, but he's also thinking about 25, 26, and 27 because that's his job. He wants to make the Lions a perennial contender to be in the playoffs every year, host playoff games, make noise, just be a consistent contender in the NFC. And you do that by drafting like this. So, yeah, Haynes might not make a big difference um, if everyone stays healthy, hopefully, in 2024, but you said it perfectly. It's, it's, it's about the long game, and he could very well be your starting right guard uh, in 2025 and playing next to Panay Sewell. And that's important. Um, and so I, I would really like this pick, man. He was a, he was a captain and an all American. Uh, so, you know, that checks some lions boxes. Um, and yeah, this would, this would be awesome. Yeah. And so with the next pick, Eric finally gets to probably making a lot of lions fans happy. They finally address what a lot of people would label as a big need. Uh, when he decides to pick Renardo Green out of Florida State. And this is a kid that I I genuinely love, Morgan. I think, again, it's is he a step down from the likes of maybe a Kool-Aid McKinstry, um, a TJ Tampa, or, or something of that likes? Yeah, maybe. But what Renardo Green puts on tape and what he does on the field is still some high-quality cornerback play. Uh, he really does remind me quite a bit of, of Carlson Davis, who they just signed. And when you look at his tape and just his ability to understand route concepts, his ability to be physical when he needs to, but at the same time, have enough fluidity in his hips and things like that to be able to break on the ball, make adjustments late in his routes so that he can still contest opposing wide receivers. So if the Lions were able to, again, if they decided to wait on corner and this is the one they get in the third round, Again, I'm I'm probably doing backflips at this point because this is like they are literally killing the draft at that point. I knew you were going to be happy with this pick. Um, I and I would be. I'm, I am too. Um, he would be. I probably wouldn't start this year. It's a similar conversation that we just had with uh, Christian Haynes at Christian Haynes, excuse me, at 61. Um, but it'd be a great room to learn from, man, because we mm-hmm. were talking about it. He can. He gives you some Carlton Davis vibes, right? Like. Those hips are fluid. He can change and stick with a man. He can he can remain in phase despite you know these receivers getting crazy at the top of their uh, route tree and it's it, it you see it on tape over and over again. Um, so yeah, he, it'd be a good room to learn from. Um, you're under Aaron Glenn and you're not just getting thrown to the wolves immediately. And then maybe if again if someone does get hurt, uh, if if Meek Robertson or Carlton Davis miss time and he has to play, then there are worse situations to be in. And uh, we were in those positions last year, right? Yeah, I was going to say, absolutely. Like he's, Renardo Green is, is also something, someone that would be coming in that's been battle tested, right? He played LSU this past year. So he's had to see some of the best wide receivers that are going to be playing on Sundays, even in that game. And and again, he held, you know, he held his own. And so this is someone like, I agree with you. He would learn a lot from the veterans that he'd be playing next to. And that would only make, and, and serve him when the time came for him to finally start getting some snaps and finally starting getting worked in. But I also think this is the type of player that would come in with a chip on his shoulder, kind of like Kirby Joseph did when the Lions drafted him. And it's like, yo, he's really going to push to get on the field earlier um, than maybe some people expect. Yeah, that's a good point, too. There's a world where he comes in camp and people are like, holy crap, this kid's got to play. And then someone's splitting snaps that we didn't necessarily think was going to be splitting snaps or they're just, you know, not starting altogether. So, it would be a competitive room too. I would love adding him to the room. You already have, you have Amik Robertson, you have uh, Carlton Davis, you have Emmanuel Mosley, hopefully, hopefully, man, please. I hope for his sake too. <laughs> stay healthy, stay on the field. Let him, let him get some tape on, uh, let him get some film on the, on out there so he can either stay with the lions or make him some money elsewhere. Uh, but yeah, you, you start to have a pretty competitive room. You have Brian branch at the nickel and this defense is starting to have teeth. Uh, on the front end, right? Like you have yeah. like, the acquisitions they made with DJ Reader. And as we know, having a competent pass rush and stopping the run goes hand in hand with making life easier on the back end, right? Yo, absolutely. And I think another thing that's worth pointing out before we kind of move on to the next pick here. Um, again, I know people are going to sit there and say like, well, why not get one of the better corners early? Because I just said this with Christian Haynes, right? It's about quality. So why wouldn't you maybe get a Kool-Aid McKinstry or a TJ Tampa or an NS Rick Rick straw out of Missouri. Like if those guys were available, why not get those guys over a Renardo green? And I would say that I think this corner class is maybe a little bit deeper than what we've, what we're kind of accustomed to. 
but you and I were kind of talking about this before we started recording. There are a lot of quality corners that are found in that third, fourth, fifth round range. Um, and so it's, it's not, I don't think, as big of a gamble to wait on a corner because, again, sometimes you're finding guys that are really great athletes um, and they just need maybe need a little bit of technique work or maybe they didn't play in the most competitive conference or something of that nature. Bernardo Green, again, you're not getting too late in the draft. You're still getting somebody on day two that's, again, battle-tested, played against some of the better quality receivers, but, again, maybe isn't this freak athlete, good athlete, but is a really good technician and somebody that, again, if you can get him on, you know, in the third round, I still think you you as a Lions fan should be really excited about what the Lions are putting together on the defensive side. Yeah, I right there with you. It's all about fit, right? And it, it's where... It's where where Brad Holmes is going to value, you know, players. So you, you take what you can get in terms of like how your board falls, and you don't want to reach, guys. I know we just said it, but we we're kind of beating that point home. Just to let's get, you know, we weren't <laughs> expecting the what he did last year, right? Like no one was expecting yeah. the Lions to walk out of the round round one with Jameer Gibbs and Jack Campbell. But shoot, he's looking pretty brilliant right now um, because I think Jack Campbell's going to take a giant step forward this year and the year after too. So, yeah, let's just uh, let's see how things shake out and just know that if he takes a player at a certain spot, like especially you know in those first three rounds, it's because he thinks highly of that player, right? Yeah, absolutely. So the Lions don't have a fourth round pick this year, so we're going to bounce all the way to pick one sixty four, which is in the fifth round. And with this pick, with this pick, Eric has the Lions picking uh, Malik Mustafa, uh, safety out of Wake Forest. And I don't hate this pick, Morgan. I I, I would be stretching it to say I love this pick as well, though, because I I do see again safety depth as a priority for the Lions, seeing as they haven't signed another safety with the loss of CJ GJ. They've decided to let Tracy Walker go. They do need some other safeties to be in that room with Kirby Joseph uh, and with Ifatu Melifanwu, it would be a tough pill for me to swallow them where you already have two young safeties to add another rookie safety to that mix. Yeah, and I, I'm hoping, and I would think Eric would agree with us at this pick. So you pick, you're taking Malik Mustafa at 164. This, in my opinion, would be after the Lions inevitably sign a veteran safety here in the coming month or two. Um, I still think they're going to add a vet because you need to, you don't want to Malik Mustafa is going to be good down near the line of scrimmage early in his career. Uh, probably going to be one hell of a special teamer uh, in mm-hmm. the NFL. Dude, isn't that big. Like he's only, you know, a little over 200 pounds, but he's rocked up, man. That's, I was going to say, like, he is built like a good, yeah. like, right. Yeah, like, he, that's fitness goals. Like whenever, like, you know, new year's kind of hits and people start imagining what their body's going to look like. It's it's Malik Mustafa, right? It's people have yeah. posters of him in the room. Like those are goals. Yeah, and dude is like if you haven't if you're not familiar, go check it out. Um, yeah, gonna be good down the line of scrimmage. Is a thumper. Plays the game with some again some hate in his heart. Wants to hurt people, not hurt people. Excuse me. He wants to wants to hit you. He wants to run through you. Um, mm-hmm. And you like that in the safety. So it'll it'll take some time for him to round out the rest of his game in terms of playing further away from the line of scrimmage, but. In this in this situation, he wouldn't be expected to play for at least a couple of years, anyways. Um, so I would like it. I would have to go along with signing a veteran, which I I'm pretty sure they're going to do here in the next month or two. Yeah, and if that happens, then yes, like a a, a pick like this is a little <laughs> bit more um, acceptable. I don't want to say acceptable. Like it'd be easier to be like, okay, I see the the path yeah. of this because yes, like you're saying, he does at at the time that the Lions would draft a player like this my thought immediately would be like, oh, he's going to contribute heavily on special teams. Like, you're looking at a gunner, probably, with, with the way yep. he's built and the way that he plays the game. Um, but again, this is another pick. Like, once you start getting into the, this other half of the draft, right, so fifth, sixth, seventh rounds, you are really looking for some depth. You're looking for some some special teams players. So I, I don't, I don't like I said, I don't hate this. Um I think if the Lions could find themselves another defensive tackle or an edge player that that they really liked, that they felt that they could also develop, I would be fine with that pick here as well. Yep, I'm right there with you, man. Um, and that's a great point too about 
setting expectations for rounds four, five, six, and seven, right? Like very, you know, often it's depth and you're, they're going to be core special teamers if they, if they show those kind of chops. And that's what I think we're getting here with a uh, pick 201 too. Um, shout out to our uh, producer, Jeremy Reisman. This is one of his favorite guys uh, in the, in the draft process for some reason, but tip Ryman tight end out of Illinois, right? Yeah. So this is another one of those picks where again, I think prior or before the Lions had signed Brock, right? I'd have been perfectly fine with this pick. Like, oh yeah, this makes sense. You're, lo- <clears throat> excuse me, you're losing your primary blocking tight end. And now you're getting a replacement one that's young and is going to have a dedicated role of special teams. And again, when whenever you're trying to go heavy package, like he's going to be in there. Um, so again, it's hard to really be upset about it. If that were the case, the Lions did and were able to retain Brock, right? So this is another one of those picks where, again, if the Lions wanted to go this direction, I wouldn't hate it. But I would also love to see them maybe du- double dip into corner here um, or, again, go edge or defensive tackle. Yeah, I, you know, it's it definitely seems like people are going to be like, why do they take another tight end? It just might be what they value. And you look at it. Yeah, they have, you know, you obviously have Sam Laporta. Yeah, Brock Wright. You have James Mitchell headed into his third year coming off that injury. And then it'd be Tip Ryman. So that would probably be your four tight ends. Uh, oh, I don't, would like... don't 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 discount Shane Zilstra now. They did retain oh, yeah, him. Shane. Shoot, yeah, you're right. Sorry about that. Shout out Shane Zilstra. So really, five tight ends. Yeah, that's that's competition right there. So that would very quickly be a deep room. I do like Ryman in because it seems like Jason Cabinda is not going to be in Detroit anymore. Is how yeah. it looks. Um, so I do like Ryman taking over some of those Cabinda snaps where you know you're in motion or you do have a, a fullback in line uh, behind the quarterback. Uh, with his hand in the dirt or, you know, whatever. So he could definitely do some of that. And Eric mentioned it in his article, and this is a good thought too, but because of the new kickoff rules, you're going to want some Mm. blockers out there still, still, excuse me, but some bigger blockers, some more athletic blockers too, right? So that can move. So I do think Ryman, shoot, you put Ryman out there and have him setting some edges for uh, Jamison Williams or Jameer Gibbs in a pinch, we might like that, right? No, absolutely. I was gonna say the picture that I like that I pulled of him for this graphic, dude's an absolute unit. So like uh, he he yeah. he definitely would serve that serve that role pretty well. Um the same thing could be said for the for the next pick that the that Eric has the Lions picking at two oh five. Uh Brandon Coleman, offensive lineman out of TCU. This kid is he's a big one, man. Like that was like the first thought I had when I started like looking like this is a big kid, man. Yeah, and a freaky athlete too. Um, nine point nine seven uh Raz score. Uh, shout out our good friend Kentley Platty. Um, um, but yeah, nine point nine seven, six four and a half, three hundred thirteen pounds, long arms. Um, so yeah, he he'd be depth. Um, which would be fine. You know, you have then you'd have Col- you still have Colby Sorsdal. Uh, in this instance, you have uh, Christian Haynes. So you're adding a, a good injection of youth into what's getting to be kind of a senior, uh, or I don't want to say yeah. elderly. I can say elderly. Me and you were their age. It doesn't matter. I was going to say, uh, yeah, we're, we're right there. We'll age ourselves. <laughs> yeah. yeah, elderly. Yeah. <laughs> so we got a, like, te- you have Decker who's getting up there. Frank is not that old, but has a lot of debilitating injuries. Um, you have your, we, we mentioned the guards already. Uh, so, and then you have Panay, shout out, the best tackle in all of football. Actually, throughout one hell of an opening day pitch tape today. I was going to say quality, quality <laughs> opening day pitch. We'll call it a strike. Much better than because, I can do. Much better. Yeah, than oh, yeah. I can do. So he can one hop to the that thing. I know, bro. Yeah. yeah. I I had two, I had two brothers who played like professional baseball. Meanwhile, I suck. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, I, uh, it, this would just be another, another depth player. Um, I'd like it just because of it's inject. Like we just said, putting some youth into that position. That's otherwise getting up there in the age. Yeah, I mean, again, once you start getting into like round six and seven, it's it's hard to get overly upset <laughs> about anything that the Lions are doing at this point because it is like you said, everything is depth, everything is competition, everything is maybe development. You're looking again, you're hoping that you're finding a diamond in a rough here, and I think Brandon Coleman could be that with his size, his his quality of play. TCU obviously wasn't nearly as good this past NFL season, but I mean, even the year before they were in the college football playoff, so. He he definitely has that experience of of playing in a, in a high profile offense, and he has that versatility of playing guard or tackle. So, um, again, this is a, a pick that I'd be perfectly happy with. Um, same thing with the next pick that the Lions have with two forty nine, going with Trevin Wallace, uh, linebacker out of Kentucky. 
special teams, special teams, and more special teams, right? <laughs> yeah, and I love the point Eric makes here for this last pick. Um, the Lions, since Brad Holmes has taken over, they've carried six off-the-ball linebackers. Um, they've retained five of them, with the one exception being Anthony Pittman, which I was sad to lose, man. Wayne State guy, you know, city kid, yeah, um, Detroit kid. Um, but, yeah, he went to Washington. So Wallace would be a good replacement just – Based off of that, you know, he'd be a core special te- special teamer. I don't know why I'm talking about the list right now, special teamer. Um, <laughs> but yeah, man, he'd be he'd be a core special teamer, and if he if he landed here uh, with some upside um, to play off the ball, just you know, he'd have to refine some skills and just his sure. his ability his ability to key, um, you know, and be able to read what the offense is doing. But at this point, like you said, you're kind of just throwing darts at the wall, hopefully hoping something sticks and. Uh, this would be as good as a dart as any, I think, right? Yeah, and this is another pick that, again, I know some people may be upset, like, why do you need another linebacker? But like you said, you're losing a core special teams linebacker, so why not get a- another player that can, again, be out there for punts, be out there for kickoffs, and and can at least, you know, bring some athleticism to special teams and, and be able to make plays. Um, Malcolm Rodriguez has, has kind of found and carved a niche for himself doing that type type of thing, so... I would be in, in, in favor of doing the same thing with a guy like Trevin Wallace um, as well. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know, Morgan. I, I feel like looking at this big picture, I mean, how would you grade Eric's seven-round mock at, at this point? Oh, I got to give him the A just because the first three picks I love. It's all picks of need for the Lions, uh, both in the relative short term and in the long term. Um, and it just, it goes, it's just reinforcing it, man. You, you don't want any position to like start falling. Like it's, it's Brad Holmes's job to continue to stack that thing up. Like you're just building it. You don't want it to regress. And I think this draft, at least on paper would, would do a good job of keeping everything moving forward. Cause you don't want to lose momentum, man. There, this is yeah. a really good roster guys. That's kind of the thing too. I think we have to decondition ourselves as Lions fans. Like I find myself doing it. Like, there's just not that many holes. Like, Mm -hmm. we're talking about, like, A.D. Mitchell out of this entire draft would be probably the only player that's going to play significant snaps right away. Um, I was going to say. That's crazy. I was going to say, like, we may have to do a video on that, like, all together and just, like, resetting the expectations, right? Because, like, I'm right there with you, you know these last couple drafts that the Lions have had under Brad Holmes, you've been getting a lot of impact players like day boom, one boom, boom. for a yeah. lot of these guys. This may be that draft where you're getting a lot of depth. You're getting a lot of rotational players. And like you said, the Lions first round pick, if it were, if it's a, if it's a wide receiver, if it's an edge player, uh, if it's a corner, those players might play. Yeah. But if it's an offensive lineman, even if it's a defensive tackle, like, Nah, <laughs> that's yeah, a that's a that's rotation. a rotational piece. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, yeah, dude, that, that speaks to how good of a job Brad Holmes and his staff has done at assembling this roster in such a short time, too. Man, you got to give them all the flowers because yeah, it's just those draft like the last year draft like that's not going to happen for a while, maybe ever again because that was crazy. Like just yeah. a hit. Like it's like Brad Holmes was a baseball player and the man hit. Just four home runs. He went four for four, four home runs. Like, yeah, pretty, pretty legendary stuff. So I think, yeah, we, and us included, like, we're, like we just said, we're not saying we're above it. Like, I find myself too. I'm like, damn, he's not going to start. Like, cause I go through these exercises myself. And, yeah. You know, oh, he's not going to start. And yeah, this team's damn good, man. Enjoy it. Detroit Lions are a Super Bowl contender for a reason. Stamp that yeah. thing. So, yeah, I'm right there with you. I'd have to give Eric an, an A here. Like I said, I, I would have a couple, like, qualms about maybe the fifth and sixth round picks. But, again, like, you're nitpicking at that point. But I, right. I think if those were your first three picks, Mitchell, Haynes, Green, you're, you're solid. You're, you're going into the season with, with some really quality depth players there. Um, and like you said, I would imagine Brad Holmes would be immediately on the phone trying to round out the rest of this roster via free agency, not to mention what happens, like, post OTAs and training camp and preseason like there's so much retooling of the roster it doesn't end like the rosters are not finalized at the end of the draft yeah and it's important to remember that a lot of these additions like the Teddy Bridgewater signing was after the draft last year 
So free agency doesn't end just after these first couple of days uh, when the new league year starts. So I, you know, it's important to remember. And yeah, but just leave it to Brad, man. We need to make some T-shirts or something. Trust in Brad, something like that, because they would sell like hotcakes. Because we gotta I'm trust that. Trust that man. I'm Absolutely. So <laughs> that's going to do it for this video, guys. Let us know what you guys think of Eric's mock draft. Do you do you love it? Do you hate it? Are there a couple of other picks that you would make instead of it? Uh, and yeah, we'll continue to kind of do these mock draft reactions. I know Jeremy and Ryan did a mock draft that, that we definitely want to, you know, jump into and kind of look at what they were doing with a, with a three round mock draft. Um, but yeah, be sure to like tap in with us in, in the comment section below. Also be sure to like and subscribe to the youtube channel uh it would really help us out immensely if you guys have been tapped into some of the things that are going on with pride detroit um morgan and i are obviously always going to kind of be around here trying to, our best to continue to provide fresh new content for you guys but at the same time helping out the rest of the crew here um as as we continue to try to grow this thing and, and provide any type of, of refreshing content that we can for you guys the fans um so Anytime that you guys can can share these videos, subscribe to it, um, it, it helps us out immensely. So with all that said, I'm Miko. He's Morgan. Thank you guys for taking the time to watch this video. And we'll catch you guys in the next one.